Welcome to another bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. (laughs) Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. So welcome back. Uh, Ordinarily, this would be the place in our monthly schedule where we would be doing a full episode. Um, I just started my new teaching gig and time has been uh, sparse, to say the least. So we are going to do another found footage fold this month as a bit of a stopgap. Next month, we should be good. We'll see how all that goes. I'm starting to get my feet under me, but uh, boy, it turns out uh, it it takes a long time to plan for lessons, uh, for students. Um, but yeah, I, you know, the upside is, uh, I set out to teach English and a few scant months later, here I am teaching English. So dreams can come true, ladies and gentlemen, but we are not here to talk about dreams. Well, kind of we are, uh, because we are talking about a movie called Sorgoy Park Prokoff. Sor- Sorgoy Prokoff. Sorgoy Prokoff, a, uh, a film from the good people at POV Horror, which is a distribution company, maybe production company. I don't know. I need to, I need to dig into this. I need to talk to these people uh, at some point. But at any rate, the premise of the movie is this. It, it not overly complicated. You've got this guy named Sorgoy Prokoff, um, who is a budding filmmaker, wannabe filmmaker, decides that he's going to head to European capitals and see what the European dream is all about. And in the process of that, things go awry. He, uh, you know, runs afoul of people slipping him drugs. There are people who are stealing his equipment. He starts to run out of money. And one thing leads to another, and he ends up basically being homeless, wandering the hillsides of a foreign country, and losing his mind. And the movie sort of captures that, right? Like, you see him at first being sort of naive, almost this uh, strange Borat kind of figure who starts off as uh, being optimistic and, and incredibly naive, and as things, bad things start to happen to him um, on the mean streets of Paris, uh, he just starts losing his mind. And as he loses his mind, he starts uh, lashing out. And um, that lashing out includes murder and, and things get grim, folks. This is not a, a movie that I would recommend you watch if you want to, you know, be in a good mood at the end of it. It is a a pretty dark affair. And um it's uh it, the movie is about 10 years old at this point. And it's kind of under the radar. Uh you don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it, but it it's somewhat well regarded amongst weirdos like myself that enjoy these found footage movies. Um but You know, we're not here to talk about subjective opinion. We are here to talk about science. And part of our science is looking at at the tropes used in found footage uh, horror films and deciding if this is, in fact, an effective found footage horror film. So um, let us begin at the beginning with keeping the camera on. And uh, this is uh, true found footage in the sense that this is all footage captured by the title character, Sorgoy Prokov, um, as he is going through this Descent into Madness. And I believe Descent into Madness was actually a, uh, a an alternate title of this movie. Um, also, I think the European Dream is, is part of that as well. I think that was also an alternate title. And I think... That might be, I think Descent into Madness is maybe the best. It's a little salacious uh, as titles go. I like it more than I like Sergoy Prokoff because it's just the guy's name and it's a bit of a mouthful for, you know, a a southern fella like myself. Um, And the European dream is a little too vague. So I don't know. I don't know. It's a, this is a tough movie. Like what else do you call it? By the way, a child will be set on fire in this movie because that is something that happens. And maybe it's best to just start right there. So 
Anyway, keeping the camera on, totally. This, this movie absolutely uh, stays true to itself in that, you know, S- Sorgoy Prokhov, if you see the poster of this movie, you'll see it is a picture of him with this camera strapped to his head and this rig that he's made for himself. And he also has one of those, like, uh, uh, you know, waist contraptions where the camera juts out from your body like they do on reality shows and whatnot where it's kind of aimed at his face. And so you have that, and sometimes it's aimed out, and you know, to, to get his POV and that kind of thing. So yes, keeping the camera on totally. This movie makes justification for all of that. Then you get into characters, and there's really only a couple. Like the main character, Sorgoy Prokhov, is the main character. In many ways, it's kind of a character study in the sense that you see this guy absolutely lose his nut. This is not, you know, a character study of, like, it's a wonderful lifestyle where it's heartwarming at the end where somebody learns a lesson and finds their way. This is quite the opposite. So, uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the main character is played by a guy named Raphael Cherkasky, who also uh, directed it. And he's very good in it. Like, he's... He, that transition from naive man child to wild man and murder, um, you know, that is not that it is an effective transition and it's, it's really something it's really startling. And, and he, he does a great job with that. There are a couple of other ancillary characters. Like there's one guy that he meets on the first night that shows back up and kind of lets him stay at a flop house uh, at one point. And, you know, those characters are pretty thin. It's not as if any of this is, uh, uh, like, deep. I mean, it's really following Prokhov or Tchaikovsky's character. And, you know, he is the linchpin of the movie. And the movie would not work if he weren't good in the role. And he is. And that's the thing that I, I think drives the movie most of all is that he is... Uh, a, a kind of a pitiable character when you first meet him and you're like, oh, this is not going to end well. Like you were too wide eyed and innocent. And by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, well, you're just a monster now. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> and, and it ends in a very like much like the awakening by Kate Chopin um, ends in a place where the world can no longer contain him. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, as far as characters go, It's not an easy sit, but he does do the character justice, you know, and it's directed uh, and and stars the same guy. So, you know, he kind of knew what he was aiming for. And you may not you may not vibe with this movie, but it is true to itself. Uh, Then you get to authenticity. Does does the goings on of the movie uh, do the goings on of the movie uh, feel authentic? And and yeah, I mean, it, it because the movie is dealing with a real world character. There's nothing supernatural in this movie. There are no monsters, uh, no no boogermen uh, to be found. And because of that, it is uh, pretty disturbing because of the casual nature with which Prokhov begins killing. And when that starts to happen, when that character makes the turn there, you know, there are some moments for sure where you think, um, you know, the movie's not going to go there. Is it? And it kind of does, uh, not a hundred percent. Like it, it doesn't revel in the, the gore. And I think that is to the film's credit that it doesn't just lay in the mud and, and stay there, but it doesn't flinch either. And there are some, pretty you know unsettling and disturbing moments uh throughout the movie but it never feels inauthentic and untrue and in fact there's one scene of murder where he just kind of happens upon a couple in the woods who are out camping when he's just living out in the middle of nowhere like eating rabbits and and birds and whatnot and um that murder scene is like it's the the banality of evil where he just decides like, Oh, I'm just going to pick up a rock and I'm just going to hurl it down at this tent where they are roughly sleeping. I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then when the guy comes out 
of the tent, I'm going to kill him with this ore that they have leaning against a tree. And then once that's done, I'm going to take off my pants and slide into the tent where this woman is who may or may not be dead and do my filthy business. And all of that happens with a, you know, no whip pans. There's nothing. It, it's just a, a static shot of, of seeing this all unfold. And it's like I said, it's incredibly grim, but it is presented in such a way that it, it is not, it doesn't feel exploitative even though the subject matter is. And you can make the argument, well, if the subject matter is exploitative, then no matter how you present it, it's going to be exploitative. But I think for a movie that is doing some pretty raw stuff, it handles it in a reasonably tasteful way. You know, this isn't like a guinea pig style movie where it's just like, here's all the gore and and rape and torture that we can throw at you. That stuff exists in this movie, but it's never... It's never the focus. The focus is really this character's descent, um, even though he is doing some horrendous stuff. And, you know, I would certainly not recommend this movie to a casual viewer of, by any stretch. You know, I would not I would not show this to my partner. She would not appreciate a movie like this and would think that there was something wrong with me for watching it. But, um, you know, if you if you are of a certain stripe, uh, this kind of material might appeal to you. Um, again, because it is not, it is not reveling in the worst aspects of it. It, 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 it certainly depicts it, but not in a way like you don't ever see an on screen rape. Um, it is implied, but you don't ever see anything like that. And the gore is kept to a minimum largely because, you know, it's a, a small budget, so we're not, uh, showing too much, but, um, also it, that's just not the kind of movie it is. Um, so uh, the authenticity, I would say is pretty high as well. Um, watchability is where you get into a really interesting discussion because is the movie watchable? Yes. Um, <laughs> but again, there are so many caveats like this isn't as gruesome in its depiction of the violence as a Serbian film, but there is certainly an element uh, a, a commonality between a Serbian film and this in, in its depiction of extreme behavior. Uh, like I said earlier on, there is a scene in which a, a child is in a uh, locked inside. The, uh, it's either a chicken coop or something like that. And the chicken coop is set on fire. And the question is like, you know, is a movie where something like that happens, something that you feel like you can watch. If it is, I do think it's very watchable. I think it's a, it's a compelling movie. Um, I don't think it's like it ends where it ought to. And it's interesting to watch this character move through the film and become less and less of a human being as he is treated like less and less of a human being in fairness, but also the way that he lashes out. Like it, 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 sort of makes a justification for random acts of violence that here, here is the kind of person that could do these awful, awful things. And it is not doing something that has never been done in movies before, but I think it generally veers towards the more artful way to depict some of this stuff. Uh, but that still doesn't change the fact that, you know, there are scenes of cannibalism. There are scenes of murder. There are, there are like I said, certainly implied rape. Um, it, it is not shown directly on screen, but but there is uh, at least a couple of scenes in, in which rape is is a part of the conversation of the scene, part of the part of the thrust of the scene, if you will. Uh, apologies for using that word, but. Yeah, I mean, aside from that, aside from the the giant asterisk that if you do not like extreme cinema, there is no reason for you to watch this because it is very much that. Um, at least in subject matter, if not in its execution of that subject matter. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a tough, tough, tough movie to recommend. Um, but I found it again, I found it very compelling. I, I found it very watchable. Um, I think that, uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, in his depiction of this character, 
is a really interesting character to watch. And the movie is tightly edited enough that it doesn't, it doesn't linger on the horrible stuff too long. And that makes the horrible stuff a little more impactful because it, it just sort of happens and then it's done. Um, and, and also it doesn't wallow in the worst impulses of some filmmakers, uh, like, like some filmmakers would take, you know, that tent scene that I described and it would be gruesome and, and more visceral and the camera would be whipping around and you would see some nudity and, you know, all of these things. And that doesn't happen. It, it's, it's a much more clinical look at, at evil in, in some ways, but it still gets, there is a moment in the movie that I will probably not soon forget in which the main character has busted into this home um, where the burning of the child took place, FYI. It's part of that scene where he has bludgeoned the, the guy who lives there, tied up the woman, the mother in the house, who is weeping because uh, the the main character is is eating the kid that burned uh, at the table and has shaved his hair into this weird halo around his head. It's a really striking scene. It's very strange. And the husband apparently slumps over dead. And while this act of cannibalism is taking place and the mother is forced to watch this maniac eat her child, uh, you hear a baby begin to cry in the house. And... Prokhov looks up, realizes what it is that he's hearing, and very, like, wordlessly gets up from the table and starts to go into the the baby's room. And the mother just collapses because it's like, oh, this baby's been quiet so far, and maybe whatever happens, the baby will survive. And you don't ever really know what happens in that baby's room. All you know for sure, and there's kind of a hint at maybe what happens, but we don't know for sure. Um, but you know, that is a moment of real terror, which brings us to the, the final, uh, evaluation, the final criteria in found footage full, which is scares. And I found this movie to be deeply disturbing. Um, it's not a jump scare kind of movie. It's not even the kind of like dread that you get in paranormal activity or something like that where it's kind of a roller coaster ride like it's scary but also it's demons hiding in the attic and dragging people down hallways and stuff whereas this is just a guy who goes absolutely bananas uh, I think is the technical term and wreaks his vengeance on a society that allows him to just tumble downward until he is just living like an animal and then he lashes out like an animal Um, but with the, the kind of cold sophistication of a person and it, I mean, it's, it's a, is it a good movie? Mm, It's tough to say. Is it a movie that I found really compelling and watchable and, and made me like sit up and take notice at a, a number of times? Um, not because it was doing something wildly different, but because it was doing it in a way that felt like it wasn't trying to just be extreme, uh, even though it is. And that's a, that's a tough trick to pull off to, to do extreme cinema and not feel like you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, that you have a point behind it. And I think that's what makes this movie better than a lot of the found footage stuff that we talk about on this show. It is, it is that weird combination of it is realistic but and but like veers into the land of the you know like the worst serial killer stories you've ever heard um but also like there's a zodiac vibe to that tent scene um yeah it you know again this is a movie i can't recommend necessarily but if the way that i've described this movie makes you think like i would very much like to see what this movie is all about i do kind of recommend it on that level Um, I do think that is, if not scary, it is disturbing. And that may be a, you know, like there's a way to do that cheaply 
And this movie, I don't think, comes by disturbing cheaply. I think it earns it. Um, so, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's tough to say, like, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I didn't really enjoy watching it. I, I enjoy the fact that it's now kind of in my lexicon of found footage movies of like, Hey, if you, if you enjoy something really, um, uh, you know, both kind of difficult to watch, but also really well done, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a be my cat, um, which is another movie that I, I think this is better than Be My Cat, but it is of that stripe. So if you've ever seen Be My Cat, a film for Anne, then you kind of know what you're getting into with this, with something like this. So, um, yeah, really bizarre movie, really interesting film. Sor- Sorgoy Prokov is the name of it. S O R G O I P R A K O V is the, uh, the spelling of that. Um, also known as Descent into Darkness, My European Nightmare. Descent into Darkness, like I said, probably the better title. Um, but at any rate, I, I, you know, as these movies go, this is one of the better ones we've done on this show, even though it is going to be the one that fewer people, I think, are, would ever watch. Um, and that's not wrong. You were not wrong to avoid this movie if, if the stuff that we talked about here uh, offends you. Um, and, and it should, and it should, this this is like awful stuff. Um, but at any rate, uh, that'll do it for this year, uh, found footage full. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you, if, by the way, please drop by the discord, uh, server. If you saw this movie and want to chat about it, I'm curious to hear others thoughts on it. And yeah, uh, next week is going to be a review roundup. Uh, with, you know, some newer releases, just chit-chatting about that. And then we've got Heart of Horror coming up and a What You Watching and another found footage full. And then at the end of March, we should be back to our main episode. So uh, we'll see how all that goes, but that is the plan as as it stands, Stan. Um, So anyway, thanks again uh, for for supporting the Dark Parade. Thanks for uh, hanging in there with me as I'm, you know, going through school and getting all the uh, the, the business with, uh, starting a, a brand new job and career and all of that stuff. I appreciate the, the support. I appreciate the well wishes. I appreciate you guys continuing to, uh, tune into the show and I will, uh, darken your doorway no more. Uh, everyone have a great rest of the week and thank you as always for joining the dark parade. We'll see you next time.